December 27, 2015. I've just spent Christmas in Agio, where I begin my trip to Carpenisi. I had visited the area with my parents when I was very young, but I can still picture the beautiful landscapes in my mind today. I remember that even though the city didn't really leave an impression on me, the trip itself had left me with very fond memories. The route is very beautiful. We pass the east side of Lake Rijonida and continue our way through the beautiful mountainous landscape. Accompanying me is my friend Hera and her dog Zizel, and there we will meet up with Angelos and Sandra, where they will accommodate us. Our first stop is at Brussos village, 30 kilometers south of Carpenisi. There, we will visit the Monastery of Panagia Prusiotisa, a spiritual place of pilgrimage for the entire region. The monastery was built on a steep, rocky area full of firs. According to tradition, the monastery was named in 829 AD, when, during the period of iconoclasm, the monks Dionysios and Timotheos brought the icon of the Holy Mary from Brusa in Asia Minor to protect it. Evidence shows that the monastery was founded between the 12th and 14th century. It is said that the picture was painted by St. Luke and it is considered miraculous by the faithful. The history of the monastery is interesting, as it was the headquarters of the Greek hero Karaiskakis during the Greek Revolution, and also a large part was burned by the Germans on August 16, 1944, as it was a hub of the resistance fighters. On this date, they destroyed many artifacts, utensils, manuscripts, and books, but fortunately not the valuable picture, which was placed in a vault. About 10 kilometers north are the steps of the Holy Mary. There are seven shapes of footprints carved into the vertical rock, which are considered to be traces of the steps of the Holy Mary. During the day, numerous religious people make a stop to pray. Fourteen kilometers before Carpenisi is the village Megalo Khorio, which is a famous tourist destination. The well-preserved stone houses create a very picturesque setting. Megalo Horyo is a historic settlement, as it was the meeting place of the liberation forces during the Greek Revolution of 1821. It was built at an altitude of 720 meters on the slopes of Mount Kaliakuda, and it is worth drinking a coffee in the square and enjoying the view of Mount Helidona. Directly opposite lies the village Micro Horyo, built at an altitude of 950 meters on the slopes of Mount Helidona. During World War II, it was one of the main headquarters of the National Resistance and it paid dearly for this, as it was burned three times by the Italians and the Germans. A large part of the population abandoned it in 1963, when big landslides on the northwestern slope destroyed a part of it and 13 residents were killed. After this, inhabitants established new Mikrochorio just below and close to the Carpenisiotis River. Continuing north to Carpenisi, you will pass the village Klafsi on your right, which was our base for the three days we stayed here. It is very picturesque and quiet, with a lovely small square, traditional cafes, and nice taverns that, as I learned, attracts people from the surrounding villages. Its name, according to tradition, came from the tears that were shed by its inhabitants after a terrible disaster.
five kilometers before Garapanisi on your left is a village called Coriscades. A picturesque stone-built village with 44 residents, which I really liked. The spacious square, the beautiful houses, and the neat little shops create a very cozy atmosphere. In this village, during the Second World War and after a secret ballot of representatives from most regions of Greece, the National Council of Free Greece was established. The building where the council assembled was a school, and today is the National Resistance Museum. Our next stop is Karpenisi, the capital of the Evritania region. The city is deceiving because when you see it from above, it looks very picturesque. Beneath the nice scenery, however, it is not the same, as the concrete buildings spoil the charm of the tiled roofs. But it's unfair to forget that it's a city, and to compare it with the surrounding traditional villages of the area. Also, when we were there, the city was improving its infrastructure, as the main streets were being paved, and as I recently read, these works completely changed the whole atmosphere of the city center. For snow lovers, 11 kilometers north is the Veluchi Ski Center, which has 18 slopes. Even if you do not want to ski, you can drink a coffee, although to be honest, the chalet is not the best I've visited. During our stay here, we took an excursion to Vignani, which is located 36 kilometers northwest of Carpenisi. The route is very beautiful, inside a green mountain landscape. Vignani is a historic village built amphitheatrically on a hillside, with stone houses and magnificent views. An abandoned settlement, which was the capital of liberated Greece during the time of national resistance. In March 1944, the Political Committee of National Liberation, or Mountains Government, was established here. In February of 1966, an earthquake caused damage to the village and was later evacuated, as it was deemed uninhabitable due to the landslides. The historic village school turned into a museum, which hosts a photo exhibition of this period. Here we head back to Carpenisi by following another path, which is many kilometers of dirt road, but interesting in a special way. A distance of 47 kilometers, which took us one and a half hours to cover. We headed to the village of Daphne on a dirt road. From there, crossed the Tavrotos River and headed to the village of Papadia. Then we continued to Pavlopulo, Stenoma, and finally, this road led us back to Carpenisi. If you like hiking and climbing, then this area is for you. There's no point in mentioning specific choices, as there are so many to choose from.
If you do decide to visit here, it's worth doing a little research. We did a mountain hike that lasted about three hours in the woods above Garitza village. The three days here passed so quickly, as it always does when you're having a good time. There are so many interesting things to do and see that you'll definitely need several days to do them all. So it's good that I leave options unexplored, so as to have motivation to find myself again in this beautiful area of central Greece. <laughs>